All right. This okay. is just Hello, you? Yeah. Yes, I'm here. And I would like to call this meeting to order at 5.35 p.m. Going on to the okay. second item on the agenda, it says public comments. Mr. Walton, do we have anyone signed up for public comments? From, my, from the information that I have, we do not. All right, good. Then we go on to the third item on the agenda, which is approval of minutes of March 4th, 2020. And those were emailed to us this afternoon. Right. So I'm gonna wait for a little while to give you a chance to read them on your email and then ask for a vote. Has everyone had a chance to glance over them? Can we have a call for a vote, please? All those in favor of approval of minutes of March 4th, 2020? Approved. Aye. 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 I, I don't know if that's seven. <laughs> um, okay, well then, there are no dissenters. Anyone a, in, opposed? Motion carries, we approve the minutes of March 4th, 2020. We go on to the fourth item on the agenda. Discussions and possible action of letter A, drug and alcohol use prevention activities. Does anyone have any activities? Not at this time. I do. Um, okay. I'm going to have an activity on August um, 31st, which is International Overdose Awareness Day. But due to everything that's going on, I'm only going to do a memorial, and it's going to be at my house. Um, I want to do like a candlelight vigil, and I've gotten, um, I've asked for, um, for people that if they know anybody that has passed away or is um, struggling with uh, with addiction, if they want to, if they want to do their name and stuff, and and uh, um, I've gotten some response back at, on on Facebook. So I just wanted to share that with you. It's going to be August thirty first, and I'll be posting information. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there anyone else? I know that uh, Ms. Rodriguez and I, Colleen and I, have been working on a PSA for vaping and some others. We had four different uh, scripts, but we were in the middle of meeting with VMT and UISD to get kids who would like to participate in the PSAs for TV when the schools were closed down. And so we were not able to get anybody to act in them. Ms. Rodriguez, Colleen, was in the process of getting radio PSAs done. So all of that is still sort of working on it, but the virus has really slowed us down in terms of finding people to work on them or participate in them. Ms. Mande. I'm sorry, if, if I may, this is Colleen Rodriguez for the record. I uh, just want to let you know that um, I submitted the uh, PSAs to Guerra Communication. They are producing them. They will have them in for Friday. As soon as I get them, I will be able to send them out to the um, commission members just for review. Uh, but they will be able to be aired on 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 uh, their radio stations, and then I will pass it on forward to the other radio stations. Uh, COVID has been very hard on all of us. I, I think, you know, it, it's, it's been a difficult thing. And um, we, and I, I think we have, you know, Mr. Hernandez that can speak uh, more on it, but mental health is, is, is high on this, uh, on, uh, with the situation that's going on. So we see that there are more things that are going on and that may result in addiction or having to lead into alcohol. So the PSAs that we have coming up 
will um, allow for more awareness and prevention of that and having to uh, contact the proper resources to prevent uh, you know, the, the addiction. Uh, so they're more on a preventative measure. Unfortunately, also in March, we had contacted uh, UISD for, um, for a project that we wanted to do with national drug awareness. And they had given us the, the, you know, the green light, the go, we were actually going to be uh, featured part of their, uh, their like ITV games, like their, their brain games. And we were gonna do like drug uh, awareness and that fell through. So we are having to do a little bit of different things, especially right now uh, that school's about to start. So we are gonna continue doing uh, what we had planned out to do. We're just having to reinvent the wheel a little bit because uh, we're having to do it virtually or at a distance where it's safe for all of us. So I just wanted to make sure that I reported that, that we are, we are still, we're still, we're still working on some stuff but we're doing things you know, in an unusual way, but a safe manner. Thank you so much. Thank you for your report. Are there any other work group, work group reports? Okay, I take that as a no. Transition um, living from home for now. Okay. Anybody else? All right, then we go on to update on detox facility. Mr. Walls, I assume. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, my name is Guillermo Walls from the health department. Um, as of right now, I don't have any new update on the detox facility other than what has already been said at the last meeting. We do, uh, we're finalizing the details on the design of the facility. And uh, I believe that there are probably working on the selection process for the contractor. Um, as of right now, like everybody has mentioned, COVID did hit us kind of hard, slowed our process down, but um, I'm optimistic that by the next meeting, we should have a, a fairly um, good report to, that way we could all catch everybody up to speed. That's wonderful. Okay. Then is there anyone else who wants to make a report? Are there any announcements from any of the groups that are in attendance? Um, yes, Mr. Arnon, this is trying to wait. Can, uh, can anyone hear me? Yes, I, sir, go ahead. You can hear me now? Yes. Now, yes. Okay, great, because I wanted to touch base on a couple of things. First of all, add to Colleen and add to what's going on, what Mr. Wall said. So I was gonna, I was gonna chime in first on what Colleen said about the the mental health issues that are going on. And I can let you know that in my private practice, um, and I see at least 40 clients a week, uh, things have uh, just escalated. I've been working even on the weekend because I have so many new clients coming in. Uh, my clients had had already depression and anxiety. Uh, it was exacerbated by, the, by the, the, the quarantine and the COVID. My newer clients, they have a lot of fear. Their anxiety is high, they're depressed. And uh, although for those that have co-occurring psychiatric substance use disorders, uh, we have had some relapse that has happened uh, all across the board in different programs that I evaluate, not only uh, the Webb County 466 Drug Court, the Webb County 466 Veterans Court, and the Pillar TCE HIV program. So there's been an increase in relapse, and, and that's uh, another issue, and that's because of the mental health conditions that are going on in our community due to the COVID. Now, um, I was going to, uh, Mr. Walls correctly said what uh, I was going to state what's going on as far as the RQ and who the, uh, what's going on with the builder. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to mention, because one of the last things I talked about, that uh, I wrote a grant on behalf of the Drug and Alcohol Commission, and it was for a medication-assisted treatment program for the sheriff's uh, office. and. Um, this was, this was uh, probably the biggest award that the state gave to all of the different jails. So uh, Sheriff Aguera got a, a big award. Now, we had been on hold for a while because uh, the, the city, after Dr. Gonzalez left, uh, they decided not to take on the, their, their part of the, 
of what we had designed in the grant. So what we had to do is we had to go back to square one. And I'm happy to say that now uh, uh, Pillar has been able to, to take over a lot of the, the tasks that the, the health department was gonna take. They have the doctors and nurses, they got everything. We've been meeting with the sheriff for the last two weeks. Uh, we're hoping to finalize that program and start uh, the program in the next couple of weeks uh, where we will provide uh, these inmates in jails that are opiate addicted with a shot of Vivitrol, which is injectable naltrexone for uh, seven months before they go out, they leave the jail. Then they'll go into outpatient services uh, and have some outpatient services, uh, re-entry services. Uh, at, at that point in time, the counselors or the case managers will refer them to programs that, whether it's a drug court program where it's scanned, they need residential treatment or, or what have you, but the pillar will provide them services uh, for six months. They'll provide them the motivational enhancement therapy, the cognitive behavioral therapy, the relapse prevention therapy. In addition to that, because there were no funds for additional Vivitrol shots, because each shot cost over $1,000, we had to modify the budget because the health department was going to buy them through the pharmacy. But because of, we need to make sure that they don't relapse, so what, we're gonna, what we decided to do uh, was to give the clients naltrexone, which is uh, the same medication that that Vivitrol is, Vivitrol is just injectable naltrexone. So uh, the clients will receive a daily dose of naltrexone because we want to make sure that they get it because if you give it to them, they will go ahead and, and, and probably relapse. So that's part of the, the, the process. They'll be going to counseling for up to six months receiving naltrexone. For those that qualify in the drug court, uh, they will continue in the drug court program with Vivitrol. Uh, if they uh, qualify for the veterans program, same thing, they'll continue with Vivitrol. Let's say they are referred to SCAN. They can still get their naltrexone as part of the case management and the counseling efforts that we have for about six months. So the program is set to begin. We, would, we had been hoping to start off in May. And as I said, we want to get this right. It's an 18 month grant. It's uh, one of the biggest, uh, it is supposedly the biggest award that the sheriff got in the state. And we wanted to use this as a stepping stone for our detox and residential because uh, we had decided that we were gonna use Vivitrol as part of our protocol uh, for the heroin addicts and even the alcoholics. So, um, you know, we're hoping that this continued program will continue for 18 months. Uh, hopefully by then, you know, the, the residential or the detox residential detox will certainly be ready, hopefully. And those clients that uh, can be funneled in, in from the jail or from, from the jail in there and they can come in this program. And I'm pretty hopeful that once we can get it again. So this is just another way uh, that I believe the Drug and Alcohol Commission uh, has helped the community deal with the opiate, uh, with the opiate uh, addiction. Because again, this was on behalf of the Drug and Alcohol Commission. There was no charge, no fees that I charged. And there's no fees that I'm charging for the, the any clinical supervision or evaluation. I'm doing this on behalf of the commission but I want to let you know that this program is underway. That was one of the last discussions we had in March, so I just wanted to let you know. That's very good. I had read about it, and congratulations that you all got this huge award. And thank you, Jesse, for volunteering on behalf of the commission. And, and again, this, this is all because of you all. As part of the commission, we talked about the grassroots efforts that we had. So the credit to all of you, everyone that's been in here and that has, has supported this cause, so, you know. We need the kudos to, our, to, to the whole group. So. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for, for spearheading this. Oh. For being so gracious about it, yes. Is there anyone no. else who would like to make an announcement? If there's, there is no one else, then I need a motion to adjourn. All right, um, I second that motion. If, I, I suggest we continue emailing each other if there's anything going on. Feel free to email me if you have any questions. Great. That's perfect. Good idea. All right, everyone, then save all our emails so that we can contact each other. And I suppose we'll have another meeting in uh, next month, first Wednesday. Yeah, first Wednesday of the month.
Okay. All right. Then all thank for the question. All in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. See you next month. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.